<laughs> no, I'm doing the lovers laugh. Oh, oh. 2024 strikes again. It strikes again. <laughs> wow. Like the superhero genre is dead. Like it's over. Like Arrivederci, ciao. I read a zen. Like it's just, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. I mean, 2025 is looking promising, but like, Ugh, this this may have been the final nail in the coffin um but uh, we'll get to that <laughs> so you know hi hi guys uh i just watched joker folie a deux or should i say folie a trois including todd phillips hmm let's talk about it <laughs> So yeah, Joker 2 happened, like it, it just happened this past weekend. Uh, what what a calamity, like what an actual disaster. <laughs> let me organize my thoughts, okay, unlike Todd Phillips, let me organize my thoughts so that I can give you guys a coherent review. Uh, but we're gonna have fun with this one because it was bad and we, we love talking about bad films here on this channel, don't we? So we're gonna have fun. But before we get into all of that good stuff, as per usual, if you haven't already, <laughs> please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next. Um, now let's get into this. Let's get into the whole mess. The Joker 2 follows on from the first Joker movie back in 2019, which was so highly acclaimed it made a billion dollars it had outstanding reviews both from audiences and from critics Joaquin Phoenix got an Oscar out of it history was made like it was literally one of the shining stars of the late 20 teens before we went into the hellhole of the 2020s and so it's unbelievable to think how the mighty have fallen with this cataclysmic sequel <laughs> because this film follows on from the end of the first Joker movie where Joker aka Arthur Fleck is committed to Arkham Asylum and here he is treated brutally horrifically by the guards he is mocked and ridiculed because of his mental health condition and of course because of the horrific crimes that he committed especially the killing of Robert De Niro you can't be killing Robert De Niro especially on television like especially in a national broadcast and it's very clear throughout the film by the way that that's the part that people have the biggest issue with which I guess could be an interesting commentary in its own right if the film was interested in in doing any of that interesting commentating but it's not and we'll get into that but after that is now paying for those crimes because he is in prison and this prison is connected to Arkham Asylum somehow like is it really Arkham or is it Arkham prison I don't whatever he's in this facility this correction facility and he's actually awaiting trial to determine um, whether he will be sent to Arkham Asylum for mental health treatment or if he will be receiving the death penalty. And in the meantime, whilst he's awaiting trial, he meets Lady Gaga's Lee, which is this universe's version of Harley Quinn. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, again, again, let me not get ahead of myself, okay? But initially, Lee uh, tells Arthur that she was committed by her parents. They forced her to be there. Um, and so that's why she's hanging out in Arkham Asylum doing musical therapy. But in reality, later on, we find out that she actually committed herself there. Her parents weren't abusive towards her. Her dad didn't even die. Uh, they seem to be well-adjusted folks that are quite wealthy judging by her dad's occupation um, and she comes from the Upper East Side like she's just like she seems to be just fine like her background seems to be just fine in large contrast to uh, Arthur's background but she just made all of it up so that she could seem more relatable to him because she is a massive Joker groupie like that's <laughs> that's who Harley Quinn is in this world she's just the world's biggest Joker fangirl and so she molds herself to him she changes her backstory for one <laughs> her backstory her whole personality her whole raison d'etre to be with joker but the difficulty is that joker isn't necessarily a real person the big question that this movie asks is whether joker really exists and if so to what extent where does arthur fleck end and joker begin does he have multiple personality disorder aka d 
DID, which is what it's referred to now, or was he fully cognizant of his behavior when he committed those violent, ferocious crimes? You know, that's what they're trying to determine in the legal case, uh, where his lawyer is saying that he is mentally ill, he has multiple personality disorder, aka DID, um, and so he shouldn't be put to death and in fact um, requires medical treatment and that goes in line with the themes of mental illness and the lack of accessibility to treatment that he had in the first movie but then on the flip side you have none other than Harvey Dent who's the guy from industry <laughs> which kind of distracted me a little bit not gonna lie but it's the guy from industry if you've been watching industry then you know um, Harvey Dent is there all smarmy or um, very arrogant and he is arguing that Joker absolutely deserves the death penalty. He was cognizant of his actions. There is no split personality. It's just him. And as a result of that, he deserves to fully pay the consequences for his actions. Now, throughout the court proceedings, you have Lee play the picture of the perfect girlfriend, supporting Arthur, going to all of the hearings, being there by his side. And she starts trickling in these words, you know, these manipulations, telling him, that he can't trust his lawyer his lawyer is saying that he has mental illness no he's not mentally ill he's just joker that's who he really is and he needs to accept that because of course she wants him to be more like joker because she's a joker fan girl and so she is trickling in these manipulations and these sinister words and unfortunately it works like it works on him he is all tied up in the coochie he's all tied up he's all worked up in the world of Gaga and so he's like yeah I am Joker and so he <laughs> and so he fires his lawyer he represents himself all chaos ensues in that farce of a courtroom but in the end it's all for nothing because he ends up being killed by a fellow inmate um, and that's after a whole bunch of other stuff happens which I'll rant about in a second but yeah that's essentially the story of Joker 2 and like, ah, where do I even begin with this run? Again, I'm gonna try and organize my thoughts. Unlike Todd Phillips. <laughs> That's the first thing. That's the first thing that I need to address because clearly Joaquin Phoenix, Lady Gaga and Todd Phillips, the folie à trois, okay, they clearly were lost in the damn sauce with this movie. Oh, they completely bought their own hype with this movie. Like after the success of Joker, Joaquin coming home with that golden statue, like, oh, they, they thought they were on top of the world. They thought they could do no wrong. They thought that they didn't have to follow due process of filmmaking. We don't need any test screenings. We don't need any executives telling us what to do. We don't need any studio interference. We are geniuses. We are geniuses. We don't even need a solid script. Like we're just experimenting. <laughs> we're just experimenting as we go along. I heard all these stories leading up to the release of this film about how they were doing their experimentations and how they were living through the eyes of the characters and whatever. They're trying all of these, you know, bohemian things. And I was like, oh, this is about to be a shit show. Like, <laughs> I knew, I knew this was about to be a shit show because that's, that's what happens when you buy into your own hype. They fell into the trap. And Lady Gaga was enabling them. Lady Gaga was enabling Joaquin Phoenix and Todd Phillips. So they were like, oh, this, like I said, folie à trois, just thinking that they could do anything and, and be anything and experiment and do a musical. And it was just doomed to fail from the beginning with that kind of attitude with that kind of approach they were done they were done before they even walked onto the set but that's number one that's the first thing that I wanted to address because all these stories about how Warner Brothers didn't even test screen the movie executives were completely hands off James Gunn was completely hands off he had nothing to do with this because this is Todd Phillips's baby like I get it to some extent because Oscars were won and billions were made but uh, to completely shove away the the traditional process of filmmaking because she has so much trust and faith in Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix clearly was a terrible move. So now to touch on the actual creative issues that this film has and I have to start off with the piano in the room. <laughs> the piano in the room, the musical elements, I oh what a flop. I've never seen, I have never seen 
a musical flop this I don't think not from memory <laughs> I just it was just I I could not believe how bad it was I could not believe how bad it was now here's the thing before we even begin hi my name is Jean and I like musicals oh yes I do <laughs> I am not a musical hater you won't get any musical hate from me I am a fan of musicals I'm not one of those people that can't suspend their sense of disbelief and they're like oh why are these people singing all of a sudden it doesn't make sense like I'm not one of them like <laughs> please don't put me in that corner please don't put me in that category but I have to say in this film specifically I have never seen a musical flop this hard like it was just awful it was such a pain to sit through all of the themes all of the ideas emotions storylines that this film tries to explore are completely abruptly and rudely interrupted by dumb ass musical cues each and every time there wasn't a single time where the music started and I was like oh yeah that's exactly what we need for this scene <laughs> there wasn't a single time that I felt that way every single time it was like oh for, for, we're just about to get somewhere we're just about to we're digging in deeper we're just about to find a little bit if not gold then silver at least but no every single time the music cut in I was it was a disappointment it was a frustrating moment and I've literally never seen anything like like it. it was a catastrophe in this film specifically I would say clearly clearly the choice to make it a musical was a terrible one it was it was an absolute failure and I was actually intrigued when I heard that there would be musical elements to this story I was interested to see how they would incorporate that you know with the Joker um of course the first film had some pretty iconic dance sequences and musical cues and so it made sense to me to kind of emphasize that a little bit especially when Harley Quinn is literally being played by Lady Gaga so like that all made sense but I was a little bit apprehensive okay trepidatious if you will um about the extent to which this would be a musical and then there was lady gaga saying that it's not a musical at all just straight up lying now now these celebrities are straight up lying to our faces and not even in a fun andrew garfield way and now here we are here we are with a whole ass jukebox musical that simply did not work and aside from the fact that it was interrupting all of the story beats all of the emotional moments and the character moments there was also the fact that the musical sequences were just god awful like it was it was almost unwatchable the the whisper singing i hated i <laughs> i hated the whisper singing so so much someone tweeted the other day that you know lady gaga released this again experimental jazz album that's supposed to accompany this movie as her you know character of harley quinn she said in an interview that she had to unlearn how to sing to do this album and someone tweeted that and i was like that can't be true after seeing this film <laughs> <laughs> clearly the unlearning of singing did not start with just the album because the film itself has this god awful whisper singing this croaky whisper singing that just pissed me off each and every time I heard it they kept doing it and it was so annoying I don't see the point of having Lady Gaga in this musical Joker movie if she's not gonna go full out if she's not gonna sing her pipes out like what what is the purpose you should have hired me you should have hired me <laughs> to play Lee Quinn and I would have done it happily because I can't sing for shit so I literally could have done the exact same thing I could have delivered the exact same performance okay and it would have been less money because you, know, you can get away with paying me a little bit less than Lady Gaga so like, what was the point of getting her in there I just I did not understand it the musical sequences weren't even particularly pleasant to watch there wasn't any dynamic choreography or anything like that um you know some of the costumes and sets were cute but it was pretty redundant at some point as well uh, but more than anything just the, the vocal performances pissed me off I did not like the croaky quiet whisper singing that they would always start off with like the oh, it's a wonderful life oh. you're, you're singing like it pains you you're singing like it hurts to breathe which judging by the amount of cigarettes that everyone is smoking it just might it just might actually hurt you to breathe but moving on moving on from the musical elements which just to clarify flopped like it was an absolute flop as a musical <laughs> okay but then just story-wise as well 
it boggles the mind why Todd Phillips decided to go in this direction when it came to the story of Arthur Fleck. Like, this is literally the most boring version of a Joker sequel that you could come up with. The, the trial? Really? Is that really what we wanted to see? Like, I, first of all, was perfectly happy with Joker being a one-off movie with no sequel ever, like, ever to be seen again. I was perfectly happy with that. I do, in fact, have a review of the first Joker movie if you want to check it out in the archives on my channel. But I really enjoyed that first movie. I thought it was great and I was happy with it being a one-and-done situation. But then they said they were going to open up the, the book again and explore a different chapter and, like, that's fair. Oscars were won, billions were made, I get it. But this is the story that you want to tell? This is the direction you want to go in? The trial? A, a, a legal drama slash comedy slash musical? Like, no, no, no! <laughs> we have lost the plot. The plot is so gone right now. The plot was being held together by Tobacco and Tar. Tobacco and Tar was literally holding this plot together because why would this be the story that you choose to tell for Arthur Fleck? I mean, first of all, we've completely lost the plot of him being a, a Batman villain. Like, we, th th there was a bit of a suggestion to it in the first movie, a bit of a nod and a wink, but now we've just lost that plot completely. But even if you didn't want to go down the Batman, man route there was plenty of other things that could have been done instead of this because nothing actually happens in this movie like he's literally just awaiting trial and he is forced to endure horrible things we'll talk about the torture porn in a second he's forced to endure horrible things throughout the trial and this horrible and manipulative relationship with harley quinn who is barely recognizable in this iteration and then in the end he dies like that's literally the whole story and it's just the least compelling version of a Joker sequel that we could have gotten and I guess that's why Tom Phillips then decided to kind of amp it up and, and put extra flourishes like the musical elements but really and truly if you had a strong story to begin with at its basis you wouldn't have needed all of that fluff like it would have just worked story-wise and it's especially disappointing and disgusting to be honest uh, when you have such a mundane story uh, because the character of Arthur Fleck is put through such horrific circumstances. Let's talk about the torture porn. Oh, let's talk about it because Todd Phillips just goes way too far, in my opinion, in this film for almost no payoff. Like, literally no payoff whatsoever. Arthur is, you know, verbally abused, physically abused, mentally abused, abused in all these different ways and then to top it off like this disgusting uh, horrid cherry on the top you also have an R word scene in the mix as well. So I, I just like what would motivate you to do that? Literally the only motivation is just to show uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Arthur Fleck aka Joker in the most horrific circumstances possible. He's already so emaciated, so thin and bony he's already put through so much and he has this mental condition that's not being properly treated he's already downtrodden but they just continue to step on him and step on him on step on him and step on him and to what end with no actual payoff with no actual story or purpose or meaning and so like I said it's just torture porn and I got no amusement I got no enjoyment or fulfillment watching that so Todd Phillip really flopped not just when it came to the musical elements but also the story here as well okay so now let's move on to Lady Gaga <laughs> now let's move on to this iteration of Harley Quinn which I hate like I absolutely hates this version of the character um i'm not the biggest dc fan as many of you guys will know okay i haven't read the dc comics i haven't really read any comics actually like i'm a fake fan in general but i haven't read the dc comics or anything like that i know she originated from the animated series actually but has become a very popular comic book character uh but i was introduced to her mostly through uh, margot robbie's iteration from the dc eu and also uh from the 
animated series over on Max, you know, formerly HBO Max. I really enjoy the animated series. I think it's really, really great. And Hayley Cuoco does a great job of voicing their character. So those are the two versions of Harley Quinn that I'm most familiar with. Now, when it comes to Lady Gaga's version, I want a refund. Like I want a whole ass refund. I do not like this. I do not like her interpretation of Harley Quinn as this Joker fangirl whatsoever. I understand what they were trying to do with that relationship where she doesn't really see him for who he really is. She wants him to be Joker. That's her whole discussion that's had overall. Like, is he Joker? Is he Arthur? Are they one in the same? Does he have DID? And so she kind of plays into that, trying to make him into the Joker so they can build a mountain together or some shit. Like, I just... <laughs> hated it i hated it so much i much prefer the backstory of harley quinn that we've gotten previously where she was a psychiatrist and then joker manipulated her and then she turned crazy or whatever i much prefer that storyline to this interpretation of the character and it doesn't help that i didn't see much chemistry between gaga and joaquin phoenix to begin with i just didn't think that they they fit together as a, a couple in general and it, it just felt so abusive and manipulative and icky considering how mentally ill um Arthur Fleck is so like the whole situation was just a big yuck for me uh, and then on top of that she's lying to him about her backstory and everything uh, but also she tells him that she's pregnant which I'm pretty sure is also another lie so like yeah she's just all my bad books okay like, I really was not a fan of this iteration of the character especially considering the fact that she didn't even need to be in Gotham you know it seemed like she was in love with this idea of mental illness and having this crazy relationship with Joker and after having watched the TV movie she's like oh I want some of that and it's just really icky manipulative disgusting in a horrible way to interpret the character it did not even need to be Harley Quinn to be honest it could have been anyone else but alas Harley Quinn has more of name recognition and so that's the route that they went down but like I said I want a refund and that brings me to another major issue that I had with this film and that was the romanticization of mental illness now this is a topic that was already brought up with the release of the first Joker movie where some people took issue with the way that it romanticized certain aspects of mental illness I felt like that movie ultimately had a really powerful message about what can happen when mental illness is left treat untreated um, and when people you know suffer from horrible abuse and childhood trauma but they don't have the resources to get better and they don't have the network they don't have the support system uh, to improve and uh, so I found that that film did a, a really good job of kind of balancing those really tricky topics without feeling icky overall yeah all of that is thrown out of the window here all of that is thrown out of the window here they seem to have lost the plot with the messaging and uh, when it comes to you know wider social issues as well it gets one name drop you know society gets one name drop and I know that people were making fun of the we live in a society meme back in the day but now now that it's gone how do you feel about this one uh, so yeah it gets mentioned one time these broader wider issues uh, but then we just move on to a whole bunch of romanticization and fetishization of mental health problems and I just found that to be really horrible and despicable um, and again combined with that torture porn element where Arthur was just put through the ringer and for what and for what I just uh Todd Phillips man Todd Phillips you will pay you will pay for these crimes okay because this was absolutely horrific so ultimately as I mentioned at the beginning of this video this may just be the final nail on the coffin for the superhero genre <laughs> like did joker 2 folia 3 actually kill the superhero genre time will tell 2025 is a big year for superhero movies uh we've got fantastic four coming up for the 10th time we've got <laughs> we've got that superman movie i think that's next year right we've got captain america coming back we've got thunderbolts that's the one that i'm most excited about oh that's the one that i'm most excited about. i still have hope for thunderbolts thunderbolts is looking good you know marvel suicide squad is looking good actually but the rest i'm like oh we'll see we'll see what happens 
happens. Uh, so time will tell if the superhero genre is in fact dead and gone. But from the looks of things here on the Joker 2 front, it's it's not looking good. It's not looking healthy. Okay, it's looking like the, the heartbeat's a bit irregular. The doctors are keeping a close eye on things. Like it is not looking good whatsoever. And so with all of that being said, guys, I'm going to be giving Joker 2 a 4 out of 10. So that's it from me, guys. Now that I told you guys my thoughts on Joker 2, Folie à Trois, it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this movie down in the comments below. Please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.